What's up everybody, Chris here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to compress VX1000 footage for Instagram. Uh, this is the question I get asked the most, how I'm uh, compressing my VX footage for Instagram and maintaining the image quality. So I'm going to show you guys exactly the way that I do it. Alright, so first thing, we're going to cruise down here to Final Cut, open it up. And yes, I still use Final Cut Pro 7, and I love using it because it feels like you're like playing an old video game or something at this point in time. And I just love editing VX footage with it, and I still think it's the best for VX. And here I have two different clips ready for Instagram. This first one with Alex is a short clip. It's 11 seconds in length. The second one here with Max is a longer clip, and it's 47 seconds in length. So the reason that I have two different clips uh, that are two different lengths is going to make sense a little later. But basically the length of the clip is going to dictate the kilobit rate later on when you're compressing it down to be under 25 megabytes in size. Um, yeah, anyways, just trust me on that. It's going to make sense in a little bit. But for now, let's export these things out. Start with the Alex clip that's 11 seconds long. I'm going to export it here as just a quick time movie. Not going to change the settings at all. Call that one Alex Lines and save it to the desktop. All right, then we're going to come over here, export this one out as well, same way. We'll call this one Max Lines. Save it to the desktop. All right, boom, there we go. Come out here to the desktop, and there they are. All right, the next thing is we need to get the actual software that I use to do the compressing. And the software that I use is called MPEG Stream Clip. And before I go any further, I gotta say shout out to Carson Lee. Carson Lee is the one who actually showed me MPEG Stream Clip and showed me the compression settings to get the crispy VX stuff. First things first, we're gonna head online, hit up Google, and just search it. MPEG Stream Clip. And there it is. First one here at squared five, click on it, and here we go. So here's where you can download it for Mac or you can download it for Windows 2. I'm sure the Windows one is the same. I've never used it, um, but anyways, if you're on Windows, there it is. We're gonna be downloading for Mac, so we're gonna click here, and we're gonna click here. And it's gonna automatically start downloading, as you can see. And this is free, obviously. So there we go. Once it's downloaded, we're gonna open it up. There it is. So I like to just go ahead and just drag it right here. And also just a little disclaimer, obviously if you're downloading something off the internet like this, you want to download at your own risk. Um, but I just have to say that I've never had any issues with MPEG Stream Clip. Uh, no weird virus issues or anything like that whatsoever. It's always been completely fine. Everyone that I know that uses it have not had any issues either. So I think it's fine to use it, but again, like, Proceed with caution, download at your own risk. First things first, we're gonna open up MPEG Stream Clip. Open, there it is. And we'll start with our shorter clip. Just gonna drag it in and drop it. And there it is. And I like to watch it once it's in here. Uh, just to make sure that the clip is fine and it's not corrupted in any way. There's no weird glitching or blank spots or anything like that. It looks good, it's fine. It does look a little interlaced, obviously, but that's just from MPEG Stream Clip, that's not an issue. The first thing that we're gonna do is go up to File, Export to QuickTime. That's gonna open up the Movie Exporter box here. First thing we're gonna do is cruise up here to the Compression Options, and we're gonna select H.264. Then the next step is to move down here to the Quality. We're gonna move that up to 100%. Now we're gonna come down here, we're gonna click Limit Data Rate. And this is where we're going to play with the kilobit per seconds to figure out the exact megabyte size. So let me show you what I mean. I like to start with 9,000. And once you type that in, you can see that it's giving you the size of the clip in megabytes now. So you can see it's at 14, so this is really a good size. You want to be under 25 megabytes because that's the size limit for Gmail. And when 
If you're sending these clips to yourself on your phone, I suggest using Gmail or through email, however you're gonna send it, but through email because I think it maintains the quality the best. If you're to like text it to yourself or airdrop it, sometimes it can kind of like blur it a little bit. So just to make it as crispy as possible, I would say use email. And in order to use email, I use Gmail, you gotta be under 25 megabytes. And I like to make it even smaller than that. Um, but anyways, Moving along, as you can see, we did 9,000 kbps and that gives us a file size of 14 megabytes. So that's perfect. And we can make it even larger actually because we're well below the 25 megabyte limit. So let's bump it up to 12,000 and this is just going to make it even crispier. The higher we can make the kbps and keep it under 25 megabytes, the better because the image quality is just gonna be crispier the higher the kbps goes up. So we have 12,000 kbps right now, and I think that's good enough. We don't really need to go any higher than 12,000. We're at a good place with the megabytes at 18. So I just, I say don't go over 12. You can, I mean, you can go up to 15. Like, I mean, for example, see, it's still under 25, so you're chilling. But at that point, it's like you can save some file size and just keep it at 12 because at 12, it's already just so crispy, you're good. You can save a little space on your phone and in your email doing it that way. So again, the whole goal here is to have a high KBPS that is under 25 megabytes. You wanna go as high as you can with this number right here and be under 25. All right, next thing, sound. We're gonna do MPEG minus four AAC. We're gonna keep it at stereo. We're gonna cruise over here and change this to 48. You could also do 44.1 if you'd like. Um, I like my sound to be up a little bit, even if it screeches out a little bit. I dig it loud, so we're gonna do that. Over here, frame size. Obviously, this is VX footage, standard definition size, so 640 by 480, perfect. And the way I'm compressing this too, it also works the same with HD footage. So let's say we were doing like 60p, HD clip, you'd go down here to 1280 by 720 or 1920, whatever else you would be compressing, your options are here. But obviously we're doing VX, 640 by 480 is perfect. So next we're gonna come down here, we're gonna click deinterlace, and we're gonna move down here to field dominance, and we're gonna select lower field first. And that's all you gotta do. Next, make movie. We wanna save this to the desktop, and at this point, I like to add on an EXP, which just stands for export. This way, I can tell the difference between the original clip and this new compressed clip. And then we just save it to the desktop. And there it goes. It's compressing. It's pretty quick. We can just close out MPEG stream clip. And here is our actual finished compressed clip for Instagram. All right, good deal. Rad. All right, so we can get rid of the original one now. We don't need it any further. And now we're gonna open up MPEG Stream Clip again, and we're gonna compress this longer one. So again, we're just gonna take it, drop it in. There it is. And again, I like to watch it just to make sure there's no issues, but just to save time, we're, uh, we're not gonna watch the whole thing. We're just gonna assume that it's correct. So anyways, same deal. File, export to QuickTime. We're gonna start here with the compression. We're gonna choose H.264. We're gonna up the quality to 100%. We're gonna select limit data right here. Here we go, we're gonna start with 9,000 again. And now you can see that this one being 47 seconds in length, it makes the megabyte size way over 25 megabytes. So what you wanna do is shrink it down. Let's try it at five. See, still well over 25, so you gotta keep shrinking. Let's try it at four, still over it. Let's try it at three. All right, now we're under 25. So although we are under 25 megabytes in size now, I still like to shrink it down a little bit more. I like to get it to where it's 22 or under. The reason for this is sometimes when you actually go to attach the finished file into your email, if it's 23 or 24, it'll try to tell you that it's too big. 
it'll try to identify it as being over 25. So just to be safe, so you don't have to go back and do this a second time, I like it to be 22 or under. So with that said, we need to go a little smaller here. Let's try 2800. That puts it to 22. I'm gonna go a little smaller too, just to see if that's the smallest 22 megabyte size we can get. It is because if we go to 27, it goes down to 21. So we'll go up 100 more back to 2800 and you're at 22, so that's perfect. So again, you can see the goal here is to get the KBPS as high as you can possibly get it and keep the megabyte size under 25 and under 22, as I like to do it. So you can see why I did a short one and a long one, because the short one, you're able to have a much higher KBPS, so it's even crispier. The longer one has to be a smaller KBPS in order for it to be under 25. So that's the difference between a short clip and a long clip. All right, and then it's just the same thing, sound. We're going here, we're going 48 here, we're gonna deinterlace, we're gonna come over here and make sure our frame size is correct, which it is, 640 by 480. And then field dominance, lower field first, make movie. Again, I'm just gonna throw the EXP for export on the end so I know the difference between the original and the new compressed one. Save, let it compress. It's gonna take a little longer because this is a 47 second long clip. All right, so that one's compressed. So we're just gonna exit out of MPEG Stream Clip. I'm going to delete this original full res here. And there we go. We have our two compressed clips ready for Instagram. So the next thing I would do is I would just open up Gmail. I would attach these individually in an email and I would email them to myself. Then I would go on my phone, I would open up my Gmail and I would save each of these clips individually into a photo album onto my phone. And then from there, open up Instagram and you can post. You're good to go. So this is the way that I can press my VX footage for Instagram and very happy to get to share this with you guys. And yeah, I just hope that it helps you. And if you have any other further questions regarding any other VX stuff or you know exporting, filming questions, whatever, feel free to hit me up. Wherever you're at today, whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a great day and much love, peace.